His name is Antoine Yates. And everything I'm about to tell you about him is true. October 2003, uh, police officers in New York City kept getting a lot of phone calls about this gentleman named Antoine Yates. People in this 19-story public housing unit who live near Antoine were saying, hey, um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but there's something strange going on in Antoine's apartment. There are like these kind of strange sounds, there are like strange smells, there's like weird activity. From time to time he goes missing for a long time. I have no idea what's going on, but you guys need to come check it out. So at first they're like, yeah, you know, whatever. But they continued to get enough of these calls. They're like, all right, fine, we gotta go out to this guy's apartment and see exactly what's going on. So two police officers go to this 19-story public housing unit in New York City to check on Antoine Yates' apartment. So they get up to the apartment door. <coughs> Nothing. <coughs> Upon their second knock, they hear a very peculiar sound. Now, the sound is so peculiar that they're not sure whether it's something completely safe and nothing to be concerned about, but the sound is just strange enough that they decide we're not going to immediately enter this small apartment. So they decide, all right, here's what we can do. We're going to cut a small hole in Antoine Yates' front door to kind of see what's going on, because no one's answering the door, but there's a strange sound. So they cut a small hole in the front door, and then they look through that front door, through that very small hole, and that is when they see it. A 500-pound Bengal tiger. A fully grown, five freaking hundred pound Bengal tiger. Again, this is a true story. You can fact check it. You can Google Antoine Yates later. You can read all about this. Now, the crazy thing about this is that Antoine has had this Bengal tiger since this beloved Bengal tiger was a baby. And at one point, the Bengal tiger actually bit Antoine, sent him to the hospital. And like Chris Rock would say, some people might think the, the tiger went crazy. No, the tiger went tiger! <laughs> so he's living with a 500-pound Bengal tiger. Little bitty, one-bedroom, New York City apartment. So the police officers obviously are freaking out. They're like, I, I don't know what's going on here. What can we do? So they kind of go back, tell everyone else, I'm sure at the department, they're like, what are you, yes, we saw it with our own eyes. So they kind of get this plan together that they're going to go back there with a few of them. They're going to get a tranquilizer gun. They're going to rappel down from the, from the top of the building, outside of his window, and shoot in the tranquilizer to sort of knock out the tiger so they can take it away to the authorities, get it in a zoo, this sort of thing. So that's exactly what happens. They go... I believe the guy's name was Officer McDuffie. He has the privilege of sort of tranquilizing this 500-pound tiger. It goes well. They come in, get the tiger, and take the tiger to a zoo. Now, Antoine Yates was living with a 500-pound Bengal tiger for quite some time and he thought that it was completely normal. You laugh, but this is exactly my point. Because he was entirely blind to how dangerous this tiger was. Because it had been with him for so long, and at first it's not a big deal, and at first it's not that dangerous, and at first it's just a cute little fluffy pet that grows into something very dangerous and very obstructive to his life. 
So in talking to you about Antoine Yates, it's really not about Antoine Yates, it's about this tiger. And for all of us, it is very likely that all of us in this room, we have something in our life that we have made peace with, that we have no business making peace with. I'll be very honest with you guys, um, 2014 has been a phenomenal year for me as far as family and business and an absolutely terrible year internally. Um, I have done some, I've made some foolish mistakes that absolutely hurt a few people that I really, really care about. Um, I had someone who was a very good friend sort of betray me and sever a relationship. Then all of these fears, all of these insecurities, all of these doubts, all of these things come running at me, charging at me, snapping at me like a 500-pound Bengal tiger. And the truth is, normally what I love to do at Rock the Stage, and we're going to do this later in the hot seats, what I'd much rather do is come out here and talk to you about strategies and the business stuff and the black and white stuff, and here's what you do in step one, step two, step three. That's what I'd much rather do. But here's been my big epiphany in 2014, and I want to share this with you guys because I... I know I don't know each of you personally, but I genuinely care about you guys doing well, getting your message out there. You guys care. That's what I love about YSU. You guys genuinely care. And I have realized this year that you cannot separate personal dysfunction from business dysfunction. These personal dysfunctions that we all have, right? Let's be honest. We all have them. And as a matter of fact, I want to share some of my personal dysfunctions with you. There's just a handful of them, and instead of just kind of talking about them, I've made a list. Here we go, next slide. <laughs> some of you are like, excuse me, you left off a few of these. Um, now, I make a joke because it's fun. Um, but honestly, uh, amongst, there are like three things in life I'm good at and everything else. I'm just terrible at. Um, I am a control freak, and I am a perfectionist. And so then when I try to get my team involved and get things off of my plate and empower people, I do a terrible job at it because I'm like controlling and perfectionist. So I'm like, well, here, you need to do it this way, perfectly, exactly like I would do it, and blah, 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 and it completely defeats people. I have massive trust issues. I have mommy issues, I have daddy issues, I have trust issues, I've got it all. So like this year, when something happened, that there's no anger towards the other person, but something where then I begin to think, I can't trust anyone. I can't trust anyone. See, Josh, you see, the old way you used to do things of not letting people in and not trusting people and trying to do everything yourself, that was the better way, because look at what happens when you open yourself up to people. And so all of these fears, all of these insecurities, all of these 500-pound tigers are right there again, sitting in my living room, about to absolutely destroy me. So for you, I want you to think about what is your tiger? What is your tiger? What is some area of your life where you've invited something into your life? You've allowed something into your life. You've become so tolerant of something in your life that honestly has no business being a part of your life. For some of you, it's some kind of broken belief that you can't do this. For some of you, it's... Um, it's comparison to other people, which leads to resentment, which leads to jealousy. And so you spend your career, and I've been guilty of this, trying to impress other speakers. I wonder what Josh is going to think of this. I wonder what Yahya is going to think of this. I wonder what that guy who told me I didn't have what it takes will think of this. Instead of focusing on the people that really matter, 
your Isaiah, your ideal audience, that kid that you're actually doing this stuff for, that parent that you're actually doing this stuff for, that educator that you're actually doing this stuff for. For some of you, it could be you've put up such a, a wall because you've been hurt in the past. And you wonder, why is it that people don't connect to my speech? Why is it that people don't connect with me? And it's because there's such a thick wall there for understandable reasons. But that wall is your tiger. It's that thing that's going to destroy you. It's that thing that's going to sabotage this thing that you genuinely, earnestly want to do. So think about what is your tiger? And probably what it is, is when I, when I ask the question, what is your tiger, it kind of like immediately comes to mind, but then you begin to sweep it under the rug, right? You begin to like go, well, it's not really that bad. And well, I mean, I do have trust issues, but not as bad as Josh does, clearly. You know, well, or it's not that big of a deal, or I can deal with it later, or not that big of a deal, or whatever. But listen, we cannot separate our personal strengths from our business strengths, and personal dysfunction leads to business dysfunction. This has been such a freaking enormous wake-up call for me this year. Um, that the things are great in my business are the, those three things that I happen to be pretty good at. And all the other things that are a challenge, that are mediocre, or that are terrible and frustrating, they're a, personal, they're a reflection of a personal dysfunction in me. And so for so many of us, it's not that we don't have enough skill, it's not that we don't have enough talent, and certainly with YSU, it's certainly that you don't have enough information or tactics. Is that there's some kind of dysfunction in me, perhaps in you, that's stopping you from moving forward with this. Because as much as I don't wish this is true, but it is how we do anything is how we do everything. How we do anything is how we do everything. So I don't know what your tiger is. I'm not going to pull you up here and ask you. It's not the point. But the point is we all have at least one. Not to brag, but I got like a whole mess of them. So what is that tiger? Getting very clear about that. If you're not sure, having someone in your life who knows you that says, hey, what are the things where I seem to self-sabotage? Um, I was working with this speaker this year pretty closely. Um, such an awesome guy, such an awesome guy, genuine, good-hearted guy. He's telling me about some of these challenges. And I was like, I gotta tell him this thing. I don't wanna tell him this thing. It's, I'd much rather talk about tactics, how to improve. And I'm like, dude, you've gotta go to counseling. That's not what he wants to hear. That's not what I want to talk about. I don't really have any authority in his life to tell him, you need to go to counseling. But for some of us, that might be what needs to happen. To get some sort of neutral, third-party perspective on, why do I self-sabotage? Why do these opportunities come up and I self-sabotage them because I'm fearful? Or why, when I'm put in these certain situations, do I self-destruct because I'm fearful? <laughs> perhaps of success, perhaps of failure. So the bottom line is this, if we are in the uh, quote unquote self-improvement business without seeking to first improve ourselves, we are hypocrites. If we are in the self-improvement business and refuse to deny the opportunity to say, what am I terrible at? Where am I not practicing what I'm preaching? then we are hypocrites. So think about what is your tiger and how are you going to deal with it? Because it will inevitably, eventually hurt you. A mentor of mine, Craig Groeschel, he said this. He said, the pathway to your greatest potential is straight through your greatest fear. 
the pathway to your greatest potential is straight through your greatest fear. The question is not, do you have these dysfunctions? We all do. The question is not, do you have some tiger that you've made peace with that's going to mess you up? It's, will you have the courage? Will you have the audacity? Are you willing to humiliate yourself to a handful of people and say, look, I've realized I'm terrible at this. I've got to get some help. I've got to get some support. I've got to get some better structures in my life. I've got to get some better disciplines in my life. I need to find a couple people in the forum that live near me and ask them, like, will you call me up and say, how are you doing on this thing? Will you lovingly call me on my crap because I know left to myself I'm going to self-destruct? We all have got a tiger. We need to deal with it. 